Hello and welcome to this tutorial course for Native Instruments Absinthe 5. My name is João and I will be explaining and demonstrating throughout this entire course each feature available on this virtual synthesizer. Absinthe allows you to combine oscillators, modulation sources, filters and effects in various ways to produce a very wide variety of sounds. You can use it to produce electronic music, whether live or in studio, from bass lines to synth pads, or to compose and generate soundscapes, atmospheres, and effects that can be used in sound design for radio, television, or any other multimedia source. As shown throughout this course, your creativity and dedication to this virtual synth will lead to an infinite range of results, as there really are no boundaries to what can be done with this new resource. This new version of AppSynth 5 takes sound design to a whole new level with a new hetherizer, mutator and filter feedback effects. You should also explore the AppSynth 5 factory library with more than 1700 presets available to get you started. In this first video, we will be taking an overall look to the user's interface and we will also help you set up and get started with Absinthe 5 before diving in each feature separately. Let's now take a closer look to the user interface. First, notice that I am using Absinthe in a standalone mode. This means that I am not using any other software platform like Pro Tools, Cubase, Ableton Live or Logic to send and receive information from and to Absinthe. This can be useful, for instance, if your intention is to simply play instrumental audio in live act with some preset that you have already chosen or created with the help of a MIDI keyboard or any other MIDI controller, really. This option is not that good for composing soundscapes because, firstly, you are not using the entire range of possibilities that Absinthe has to offer with MIDI sequencing. And secondly, it allows you to record no more than 10 minutes for each time. In standalone mode, you get an option from the file drop down menu that won't be available if you are running Absinthe through any other software the Audio MIDI Settings menu. It is important that you are capable of setting your own audio, routing, and MIDI settings depending on the system and hardware you are working with. This option won't be available when using Absinthe as a background generator or processor because these settings will be set by the main software in which you are running Absinthe. In this particular case, we will be using Core Audio as my main driver. It is the most common driver amongst Mac interfaces. I will also be setting the main audio device as Soundflower, which is actually a virtual sound card just so that I can record the audio coming out of Absinthe to use in this tutorial video. The sample rate defines the number of samples per second that is taken from a continuous signal to make a discrete signal. Just remember that the more samples or information that is sent per second, the more your computer will struggle to obtain those samples. As for the latency, Think of it as a delay from the exact time when your information is sent and the time that takes from, for that information to be processed. In routing, you get a number of inputs, outputs, in which you can define what is being sent in and out of Absinthe. Again, I am setting these options in this particular way so that I can record the output to use in these tutorials, without worrying that the record time may run out in standalone mode. In the future videos, I will be using Absinthe together with Pro Tools, so you will notice a little graphic difference on the main window. In the MIDI settings, I will be using Oxygen 8 V2 as my main MIDI controller, 
please understand that you do not have to own a MIDI controller to operate AppSynth. That can be done with your mouse controller just by pressing the keys from the virtual keyboard at the bottom with your main keyboard by typing letters from each row or sending MIDI information through any other software into AppSynth. The main keyboard at the bottom can be switched between visible or invisible by pressing this keyboard button on the navigation bar. The navigation bar is actually quite easy to follow. Each of these rectangles represents a different option which will have impact in the master output of the sound being generated. To shift from one to another, you must simply press it as shown. If you need to open any of these options in a separate window, just press down Ctrl when clicking over it, and a new window will pop out. Farther on the right, you have the computer resources with CPU, usage meter, plus in and out output level meters. In the file menu, you get options related to saving and opening sounds, as well as general, surround, and browser options. In the Edit menu, you have options like Undo, Redo, Copy, and Paste. Going on the middle, you have the Search Result list, which displays the search outcome results. Whenever you search for some instruments, sources, and genre. Next, there is the Mutate option. This option allows you to create new sounds based on a favorite preset you may have and some new attributes you might have chosen. But we will return to mutation later on. When you press the saving option, it will overwrite the pre-existing preset. If you want to save it as a new preset without overwriting the old one, you have to press save as and enter a different name. The Sounds button menu will shift from the preset browser to the file browser to locate the presets you want to use. The Instruments menu displays all the instruments you have on the presets divided by different instrument types, sources, timbre, articulation and genre. As for the effects, it happens just the same way, but categorized by type, mode, characteristic, and application. To choose any of these sounds, instruments, or effects, you just simply have to press it twice, just like a normal double click. Whenever you choose a type of instrument and source, for instance, it narrows down the search on the name browser. This Programs option lets you list several presets. For instance, when you search for a preset that you like, let's say uh, this organ right here, you just need, if you want to save it for future usage, you just have to slide drag and drop to the program list. You can load different program lists or save new ones. Next, you have the mutation options. These options allow you to control the amount of mutation being used and mix it with the original sound you chose, but we will later on dedicate more time to this important new option. Fine-tuning options. It's a row of eight controls that form a quick access to eight characteristics of each particular sound, volume, brightness, which adds a little more of those higher frequencies, bass, same but for the lower frequencies, resonance, distortion, effect, mod depth, and mod time. These controls allow you to quickly tweak the sound after a mutation or after loading some preset you might have chosen. 
That is all for this brief overview of the control buttons and graphic interface for Absinthe 5. In the next videos, we will be studying and testing each sound generating and modulating option individually. So stay tuned to learn more about this amazing virtual synth.